Okay, as promised, this is a follow-up tutorial to the room building tutorial and in this one we're going to focus on adding light sources and rendering our first image. And maybe we will add basic materials to the room too. So let's get started. We have a camera in our scene, which is a regular 3D Studio Max camera, not a V-Ray camera. Uh, we're going to use this one. Uh, we set up the camera in the previous tutorial, so if you didn't watch it, watch it now and then come back to this one. Alright, first things first, we're going to change the rendering setup. We're going to change the rendering method to V-Ray Renderer. Uh, the V-Ray Renderer is a plugin to 3D Studio Max. It doesn't come bundled with uh, 3D Studio Max, so you need to buy it separately. And after we activated the V-Ray renderer, we are now going to make some changes to the renderer in itself, to the rendering em uh, engine. Alright, first thing, we're going to change the resolution to HDTV and to something like 1000 for the test renders. We're going to see that the show save frame is checked and it's not so we're going to check it and now we can see a save frame that is an accurate representation of the final rendering image second thing we're going to do is change anti-aliasing filter to Cutman ROM which produces sharper images I like this one in particular Third thing, we're going to change the color mapping to exponential, so, so there will be no burned out areas. And we are going to put 085 in the gamma uh, for better contrast. We're going to put 0.9 and 1.1 in the brighter multiplier and the darker multiplier, which will produce even more contrast to the image. I'm going to uncheck the effect background because we don't need to affect the background. And I'm going to check clamped output and sub-pixel mapping so we will have no errors in the final image with the bright areas and things like that. Now, next thing, indirect illumination. We're going to check the indirect illumination so we will have a much more realistic results. I'm using irradiance map and light cache engines. In the irradiance map, I'm going to change the percent to very low and click the show calculation phase. Uh, keep in mind, we're doing uh, test renders for now to test the uh, lighting in the scene. For the final render, we will use higher and uh, presets. I will show you which ones. Now, next thing in the light cache, we will lower this to 800 and we will check the use light cache for glossy rays, this renders a little bit faster. Show calculation phase here too, because we want to see the calculation phase before the final render. I think this is enough for now. If you render the image as is, you will see a black image, dark, because there are no light sources in the scene. We need to add light sources. We will start with the sun. In order to add the sun, <coughs> we go to the lights rollout, we use the V-Ray, V-Ray sun, and we will place the sun in the scene, like so. I prefer using an angle which is directly in front of the camera, because I like the shadows it creates. Now, once you place the, the V-Ray sun, it will ask you, would you like to automatically add a V-Ray sky environment map? I will choose no for interior renders because I am using HDRI images for the environment map. I'll choose no. Now I'm going to go to the front viewport and take the sun up because it's not on the ground. I'm going to put it somewhere here. The direction is fine, maybe like this. In the camera viewport you can see the sun shines in one direction. It will shine through the door and through the window, maybe from this one too. Now, if I render this image, you can see places where the direct sunlight beams on the floor. 
which is good, but it's way too bright because we can see white noise in the image. So the reason this is bright is because if we go to the modify of the V-Ray Sun, you can see the intensity multiplier, which is the strength of the sun, is set to 1. This is good for the V-Ray camera. Uh, because we are using the regular camera, the 3D Stereo Max regular camera, we need to crank this way down to something like 0.05. And render again. Now the scene is very dark, but that's what we were looking for because all we want from the sun is these sharp uh, rays of light that shines through the doors that represent the direct sunlight in a day scene. Maybe we'll crank this up a little bit more. 0.07. Now the next thing I want to add is the sky. We have a sky in the scene. In every scene, in every uh, 3D studio scene, exterior and interior, we need to put a uh, light that represents the sky. Uh, the way I go on doing this is uh, I add a V-Ray light, I make it a dome light, and I put it anywhere in the scene. The dome light is like a huge invisible dome that represents the sky. So whatever color you put in here, or whatever image you put in here, texture, uh, is shining all over the scene, on everything. So now I'm going to go to the interior, and uh, the multiplier set in the V-Ray uh, dome is set to 30. This is good for a V-Ray camera, but it's not good for our regular 3D Studio Max camera, so I'm going to crank this down to maybe 5. Now, I don't want to use a white light as sky because the sky is not a white light. It's a combination of a lot of lights. It's bluish and it's a little bit yellowish from the sun and things like that. So, I'm going to put a map in the texture map which will represent our sky dome. I will put a map or click the node and put a V-Ray HDRI map I will put an instance of the HDRI map inside our material, material editor and I will add our HDRI map. I will add this map that I'm using now uh, in the descriptions below. So I'm using this one. This map is of a uh, bluish sky and grass and some mountains on the back. Uh, the mapping type is not angular, it was taken as a mirror ball. So I'm going to put it as a mirror ball and I'm going to move the horizon ro rotation to 180. Now the rotation is like, the mirror ball is like a panoramic image. So when I rotate it, I can see different directions of the image. We'll put some direction in, like 360 is back where we started, so it's like 260 maybe something like that and we will try to render the image without the sun active because we are trying out one second we are trying out our sky so I'm going to uncheck the enable and we are left only with this light source in the scene and it's set to 5 now I'm going to try see there are different colors than white there is a little bit blue and a little bit yellowish and things like that but it's too dark let's crank it up a little bit we'll crank. what I like to do in the V-Ray HDRI map is add inverse gamma to change it to 2.2 so now the gamma is very strong and the image is brighter, shown brighter so let's try this one much better, you can see the HDRI image is leaking inside the room, which is good for us. Now I want to add the sun too. Now we have a sun and HDRI light. You can start seeing really nice shadows in the scene and sharp 
sunlight. <coughs> now, everything is fine, but the scene is too dark yet. So we're going to add helper lights, filler lights. We're going to go to the front viewport, and I'm going to add a V-ray light of a plane type to each opening of the room representing that opening. So this is the first one. Go to the top viewport and I'm going to put it in place. Represents this opening. Alright. Now I'm going to click on invisible because I don't want to see the light itself. I'm going to change the color to a bluish color because it shines from the outside and the outside is sky, and the sky is a little bit bluish and maybe 4 multiplier and that's it, that's the first one now I'm going to shift drag this light to this opening now I'm going to change the width and height of the light itself to fit the opening it doesn't have to be really exact, just about this, alright, this one, and I'm going to shift drag here, which is the same opening, I'm going to put it here, this opening, a little bit smaller, and shift drag here, it's fine, and the last one, shift drag here, this, make it bigger, because this is the opening for the balcony, which will be built in a later time, I'm going to place it here, alright, so if you look in a perspective viewport, you can see there's a light plane in each opening of the room, representing that opening. Now let's see, this opening represents a door which leads to the interior of the house. So this light source, I'm going to change the color to a little bit warmer light because the light doesn't come from the outside, it comes from the inside. So I'm going to do it something like this. And there are two more openings from the inside, this one and this one. Again, I'm going to copy this and place it in doors, one, to make it smaller, and two, to rotate it, I'm shift dragging all these lights, now this is fine, the color of the light, Last thing I'm going to do before rendering is I'm going to see where the sun is coming from and this is the direction. So I know this light, fill light, needs to be the strongest. This one, this one, and this one. This one is less strong because it comes the, from the opposite direction for, of the sun. So I'm going to choose this light and I'm going to put it at 5, this one at 5, this one at 5 and this one is a little bit less, something like 3 so the lights coming from here are stronger than the lights coming from here these lights are not dependent on the sun because they are lights from inside the house so you can put whatever value you want let's put 6 here and 6 here this is a try and error operation so if the lights are too dark just crank up the multipliers in the lights and everything else. What you need to remember that the lights coming from the sun are the strongest, lights coming from the exterior of the house but other opposite direction of the sun are the weakest and the lights coming from other rooms just try rendering and see if they are too bright or too dark. Now let's try rendering the scene. Nice.
Now you can see the fill lights are filling the room nicely. You can see that the room is bright. The direct light from the sun is shining the floor, which represents an afternoon sun. And we have an environment map which gives a little bit of color to the scene. So we have a scene here. Now, in the next tutorial, we're going to add some materials to the scene.